We create things, and out here you can already see that we build big. Seeing how such a large machine works is just incredibly fascinating. It's a critical moment. That's why the excavator's operator has to be really careful. The tunnel's finished and I help to build it. If anyone makes a mistake, it can cost lives and vast amounts of money. Major construction site near Kirchheim unter Tech near Stuttgart. Deutsche Bahn is building a new rail link between Wendlingen and Ulm through the foothills of the Alp. With two tunnel boring machines more than 100 meters long, around 200 miners are driving their way through the Swabian soil. It'll take one and a half years before the tunnel builders reach daylight again, eight kilometers further west on the other side. The tunneling is supervised by six shift engineers. Four of them are women which would have been unthinkable a few years ago because women in tunnels were said to bring bad luck. Civil engineer Sarah Gitson inspects the progress. In the south tube, 205 meters have already been completed. We start driving with the machine, so the cutting wheel with a diameter of 10.87 meters is at the front. It eats its way through the rock. When the driving length is reached, the machine stops and we can then install the tubbing segments in the machine. There are seven altogether, six and a large keystone. That means we can do the driving and make the tunnel lining in one go. The lining consists of precast reinforced concrete segments, which are assembled into rings to form the tunnel shell. On good days, the miners manage to install 15 rings in 24 hours, but they've not quite reached that level yet. We are still in the startup situation and it is always a bit slower at the beginning. The teams first have to get used to each other, get to know the machine. Every machine reacts differently, acts differently, but we are already quite satisfied and now we will definitely be moving on quickly. The tunnel boring machine, or TBM for short, is controlled from an inconspicuous container in the machine's trailer. Kamil Popovich controls the machine in the north tube, which started a month later than the south machine and is still half outside the tunnel. We are now almost ready for a start again to make a complete excavation of uh, 19, uh, ring 19. Uh, for now, what I can show you? Well, I can show you the procedure of start, of start of TBM. We need to turn on the hydraulic oil pumps for all of the system. The entire starting procedure takes a few minutes. We start the uh, cutter head. Simple, one button. <laughs> uh, now, it's, now it's starting. Our tunnel belt is ready, it's running, cutter head. It starts running. We have uh, two RPM per minute. It's two rotation per minute. Uh, this is our steering system. We call this uh, articulation. Uh, we use automatic now. When our belt is ready, uh, then we can start excavating. In the driving phase, hydraulic cylinders press the cutting wheel against the working face with a pressure of up to 400 bar. 140 cutting rollers excavate the ground, aided in their task by a special foam. Uh, this button is for a foam system. Mm, it's making our material more wet, more easy to excavate from, from the front. Sometimes uh, we have a difficult condition there. It's more wet, more uh, dry. So this is a mix of the uh, water, air and, and hemi, what we use for uh, making the foam. And now I need to lift you for two minutes 
to restart the phone because the one sensor it's uh, it's cut out. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. TBM operators have to know their machines very well. A sensor sounds the alarm. Show my sensor. Popovich benefits from his experience. It was just a blockage. Small sensor, but making big problem. Every time a tunnel is built, new challenges await the miners. The driving method chosen depends, among other things, on the geology of the terrain. In the case of the Alpforland tunnel, conventional tunneling methods such as blasting are out of the question for another reason. We're driving the tunnel under the motorway, so we are right next to the autobahn, and blasting would cause considerable vibrations. So it's much more pleasant with the machine because we don't generate any vibrations. The residents above us don't even notice the machine. Months of preparation were necessary for the project because the machines had to be built from scratch. First of all, before the machine even arrives at our construction site, it is manufactured and designed in the factory, and we consider what requirements we have to meet and what requirements the project has to meet. The factory is located in Schwano in Baden-Württemberg and belongs to the Herrenknecht company. This medium-sized business specializes in tunnel boring machines and is the world market leader in this sector. Then the machine is manufactured in the factory. We were there and did a factory acceptance test, which means the machine is completely assembled and runs in empty space, so to speak. No lining segments are built either, but a test run is carried out. Tunnel boring machines consist of more than 90,000 parts. Herrenknecht builds machines with diameters of 10 centimeters to 19 meters. The size of the cutting wheel depends on how wide the tunnel is going to be in the end. The backup is trailed on wheel housings that rest on the edge of the tunnel. The manufacturers adjust more than 200 parameters to suit each project. The gigantic drills are by no means bargains. Each of the two machines costs 15 million euros. When everything is in order and the machine has been accepted, it is dismantled again into a number of individual sections and we bring it here. So the individual parts travel almost 200 kilometers to reach the construction site. It will be another six months before the first machine can be put into operation. It's better not to mix up any parts here, because the two tunnel boring machines are constructed as mirror images of each other. It was then lifted into the pre-enclosure where it was assembled into the final machine. In the end, the trains will travel through two single-track tunnels that are connected by cross passages. The special thing here is that each tunnel gets its own machine, and that is very special, as normally there is only one machine, which is then withdrawn and used for the second tunnel. In the South Tunnel, in Kirchheim unter Teck, the machine is ready for the construction of Ring 19. To do so, Popovich first has to drive his machine two meters further into the mountain. So now we are ready for uh, pushing. This is the gate for a screw conveyor. Screw conveyor help us to move out the material from the front. From the, from the front of the machine. Now I opening gate, I starting that screw conveyor pump, and then I push advance. Now we are moving. Here you can see the, uh, the speed of the machine. We go in 20 millimeters per minute. This is not maximum. Uh, we go in with this speed because on the beginning, we cannot use full, uh, full power of machine. Uh, it's because of the push ram on the back. If we will go with full speed, with full power, our, our rings will push out uh, from, the, from the tunnel. So this is dangerous. <laughs> During excavation, the ground is conditioned and then transported away with the help of a screw conveyor. As the TBM driver, Popovich must always keep an eye on his conveyor belt. 
This is the visual camera. Here I can see uh, condition of my material, when it's how it's look like. It's also very important because uh, it cannot be too much dry, too much liquid. It must be perfect to stay on the belt and go all the way out. Our cutter head it's two RPM, but our screw conveyor it's much faster. Now it's uh, going four, four point five maximum to five. For now, our belt is uh, maybe 500 meter, but we all know tunnel it's eight kilometers. So soon our belt will be longer, longer, longer. Every, every day it's longer. Uh, and then uh, the mat material condition must be very good. So we have no problem to transport him all the way up there to the, to the drop. The material is distributed to several tips via two conveyor belts. Where the slag goes to is specified precisely. However, the large site is only an interim storage area for the slurry. Before it can be transported away, it has to be processed further. We are now at the location of the West Spreader, which is the spreader for the North Tunnel. Each machine has its own area for dumping the slag. The material is being limed here at the moment. The liming is done to make it thicker, so that the material takes on a new condition, which is then better for being transported by lorry. About 180 heavy trucks take the waste to landfills in southern Germany every day. In total, 3.2 million cubic meters of mining slag are collected in one and a half years. Some of it is reused directly to build noise barriers. It always depends on how fast we drive, how many rings we built. The amounts arriving each day always vary. We always try to drop 500 cubic meters on each heap that the spreader produces. The spreader is then swiveled and the next 500 cubic meter heaps are produced. Ultimately, the finished tunnel will consist of 54,000 lining segments. The reinforced concrete elements are placed together in a ring and form the support for the tunnel. The place where the lining segments are manufactured can actually be seen on the other side of the motorway. The factory was built especially for the tunnel construction site. Supplies for the tunnel will be produced here during the entire construction period. Up to 150 elements leave the factory every day. Katarina Kresse is in charge of the plant and personally inspects the quality of her product. Lining segments are produced here. We operate stationary production, which means that we have the formwork here. We have a total of 77 formwork units, which means that's 11 rings we can produce in one operation. The formwork itself fills about 4 cubic meters. That means we fill it with concrete twice. The concrete is poured, vibrated and compacted. Then the formwork and the back are removed. The formwork is closed and covered. Steel inserts give the lining a higher tensile strength. The concrete is vibrated to prevent the formation of bubbles. Producing them in formwork means the lining elements can be manufactured with millimeter precision. After about eight and a half hours, we can take the concrete out of the formwork. So then it goes to our intermediate storage back there for another 24 hours and then goes out into the outside depot. The outside depot is located on the east construction site. This is where the lining segments wait to be installed in the tunnel. The components spend almost a month in the fresh air. At first glance, all the components look exactly the same, but only at first sight. The heaviest weighs 10.5 tons, as much as two fully grown African elephants. Sarah Gitson makes sure that the tunnel segments find their designated places. 
When the lining elements come from the factory, we have three different storage places where we can sort them. Of course, the storage of all these elements is planned beforehand, so it's not a random system. Ultimately, every element has its place, which storage location, which row, and we know exactly where every element is. Lining segments have beveled edges, which makes it easier to form curves. On straight stretches, the tunnel rings are installed alternately, offset by 180 degrees. In the tunnel, we install left and right rings. A ring consists of a total of seven segments, all of which are stored here. Of course, when transporting them into the tunnel, you have to make sure that the right segments are brought down to the right ring. Keeping track of everything is not always easy. So, carefully planned storage is important for preventing mix-ups during construction. Each lining segment has its own identification number, and this means we can find out at any time when this segment was made, when it was delivered here, and finally, when it was installed in the tunnel and where. The use of lining segments was already established in Alpine tunnel construction a hundred years ago. The prefabricated components enable construction with tunnel boring machines to be carried out efficiently. In the neighboring lining segment plant, work goes on around the clock. In the 72 meter long and 35 meter wide hall, 35 people per shift exclusively produce lining segments. The components measure exactly two meters and not a centimeter more. Plant manager Katharina Kresser makes sure that her team works with absolute precision. For the curve length, we have tolerance specifications of 0.3 millimeters, and we keep to them. It looks pretty big, and you always think on the construction side it somehow fits, but with our segments we have very high tolerance requirements. And that's with an outer diameter of 10.5 meters and a thickness of 45 centimeters. A ring consists of seven segments. Four are standard stones. Then we have a keystone, which is always the one with the slanted edges, which is pushed in last. And then we have the counter-locking stones that complete the ring. There are seven stones in a ring. As standard rings, we have a right-hand ring and a left-hand ring. And then there are various special stone rings for cross passages or anchor rails and so on. After a final quality inspection, the lining segments are loaded, ready for transport to the construction site. We operate here in two shifts, in other words, 24 hours a day, five and a half days a week. And we then continuously deliver the segments to the machine, up towards the outside depot at the top of the Bee East. The machines are supplied from there. The segments are in intermediate storage for about 28 days until they reach a 28-day stability level and can then be installed. Finally, the segments are given sealing strips so that the tunnel shell won't be penetrated by water. Then, they are sent in pairs to the outside depot. Sarah Gitson ended up in tunnel construction straight after her graduation. She's never experienced any reservations about women in tunnels. That's another reason why she's never regretted her decision to choose a career underground. I just really enjoy it. It's impressive to work in such a machine. It's such a pleasure to go to work and build tunnels. And to drive through the earth. And to be in places where no one has been before. So we are the first ones to be in this place now. Once a tunnel engineer, always a tunnel engineer. So if you love tunneling, you stay with it. I haven't done anything else yet and neither have my colleagues. For the construction of the Alpvorland tunnel, earth pressure balance machines are used. The thrust cylinders transfer the so-called support pressure onto the excavated material to prevent the tunnel collapsing uncontrollably. The TBM in the North Tunnel has now also started operation. We have a parameters 
to, to control when we are excavating and, and we cannot pass. Let's, uh, uh, let me explain you. When I excavating material, I'm balancing with the pressure on the front. When my pressure is too low, all the ground up of me can collapse down. When my pressure is too high, all pressure can go up and push out the ground. So you are balancing between too high and too low. That's why, that why uh, it's called EPB machine, air pressure balance. Eight kilometers further west, the two steel drills are to emerge from the ground again 18 months later. The north tunnel exit is already open. On this side, so-called conventional tunneling is being carried out. The ground here consists partly of rather less solid clay rock. Shift supervisor Karolina Pozorska is therefore paying particular attention to safety. The geological conditions we have here mean conventional tunnel driving here needs a very TBM performance. And that means we have a high level of safety here. You can see that very well here. We have a sawtooth profile. The profile widens due to the fact that we have to install a pipe arch every seven sections. Here sections are one and a half meters. Unfortunately, you can't see them here now. This pipe arch is a 140 millimeter diameter steel pipe, 12 meters long, and is then grouted with cement. This is the safety shield above our heads, so to speak, so that we can carry out the excavation. The sections designate the area that can be opened up without safety measures. To support the tunnel, the outer shell is made with sprayed concrete. The beginning of tunnel construction is when the safety and securing measures take particular priority. The miners work their way into the mountain in steps of 1 meter 20. Conventional tunneling is laborious, as Pozoska herself knows too. At the moment, we are filling in our calot lower invert with gravel material. As you can see here, its invert is round. And in order to be able to simply drive the equipment in here, to give it area to stand on, we have to fill it up again with gravel. This gravel, as it's lying here now, will be removed again when we then open the complete ring closure, for example, the complete standard cross-section with the side wall and base. The work starts with the calotte, the upper section of the tunnel opening. This is then followed by the lower two-thirds, the so-called side wall. Despite the great effort involved, conventional tunneling is worthwhile at this point. In terms of driving performance, we are of course somewhat slower than a machine drive, a TBM drive. But we can also open up different cross sections. We can realize various sizes and, of course, a tunnel boring machine can't do that. It has its standard diameter, which it then, of course, uses, and we are very flexible. If everything goes smoothly, the miners will meet the TBM in the North Tunnel. The meeting point has been clearly defined. After 134 meters of tunnel, there will be a connecting structure. This will be a widening structure followed by the connection to the goods train link. And that's why the TBM has a fixed diameter. So that's why we're using conventional tunneling. The tube entrance is now prepared for the 44-ton tunnel excavator. Karolina Pozorska is also curious about what awaits her in the ground ahead. For the engineer, tunnel construction is a dream job. While at university, she did an internship at a tunnel construction site in the middle of Stockholm. It was an experience that got her hooked. Once I'd experienced how blastings and all the tunneling work are actually done underground and the whole mentality and working approach, I was then totally hooked. And I enjoyed it so much that I took it further in my master's degree and actually only looked for that kind of job.
It's just not a run-of-the-mill profession, and it's not a standard construction method either. In tunnel construction, you open up a meter and you're faced with something completely different than you'd originally expected and planned for. You have to react immediately, with different safety measures or perhaps even a slightly different construction method. The work's full of surprises and your daily routine is anything but boring. And you never know what's actually going on underground. And I think in construction work that's something very special. The finished tunnel will carry an overburden of up to 63 meters. In the end, the Alp Vorland tunnel will be one of the longest railway tunnels in Germany. But there's still a long way to go. While the excavator in the west laboriously shovels its way through the mountain, the TBM on the east side is digging into the earth with seven league boots. Excavation for the next ring is underway at a speed of one meter per hour. Kamil Popovich has to make sure that at the end his machine really comes out of the ground in the right place. During the excavation, the TBM operator must control all the time the target of the TBM. This is like uh, our eye where we go in. It's compass, everything inside. Without this, it's uh, no possible to drive. Otherwise, uh, we can go too much left, uh, too much left, too much right, and then, then we have a big problem. Our target is, of course, in the middle. The arrow, it's TBM. Yes. This is our front. This is our back. From the front, we can see our face. It's six uh, millimeters higher and three millimeters in the left. So this is a very, very low. Uh, Hit. Here we have uh, our tendency. Our tendency is uh, minus 23. It's telling us we go in two centimeters. We decrease in our uh, level two centimeters all, all the time because uh, TBM should go deeper and deeper before we get under the under the highway. While TBM operator Kamil Popovich guides the machine safely to its destination, machine engineer Uwe Stenner takes meticulous care of the technology in the two TBMs for the rest of their service lives. There are differences. The South machine will probably come out, be dismantled and sold back to the manufacturer in its entirety. The North machine, well, there are also various scenarios where it will remain in the mountain, the whole backup system will be taken out and will also go back to the manufacturer and the machine will be stripped down. Parts will go to the manufacturer and one part will remain in the tunnel and be lost. Because most tunnels always have basically different diameters, often because of the ground conditions that need a different tunneling method, so that I need a hydro shield or an EPB shield or a hard rock shield. But in addition to that, we also have different diameters. Here we have a diameter of 10.88, so if the next tunnel has a diameter of 9.5 meters, I can use some parts of the machine, but not most of them, because the machine's too big. It doesn't fit, so I have to replace the parts. I might be able to do something if the difference is in centimeters, but if it's more, it just won't fit anymore. At the front end of the tunnel boring machine is the cutting wheel which is equipped with 52 cutting rollers and 140 peeling blades. The power needed to operate the wheel is an enormous 4,400 kilowatts, the equivalent of almost 6,000 horsepower. At 190 tons, the cutting wheel weighs about as much as two and a half diesel locomotives. For Uwe Stenner, the two tunnel boring machines are not simply working tools. This is my machine. I use it to drive tunnels and afterwards everyone is proud that the tunnel is finished and I helped to build it. So basically that's what drives a tunnel builder, so that he can say, I built something here. Tunnel driving is a hard and dangerous activity, particularly in the early phase of tunneling in the 19th century. Excavating the earth claimed many lives through accidents, but also miners' diseases such as anemia. But one superstition has survived from that time. No tunnel construction site should be without one woman. This is the statue of St. Barbara, the patron saint of miners and tunnel builders. 
St Barbara's Day is on the 4th of December, which is also taken very seriously by the tunnel builders. So the 4th of December is actually a holiday at every construction site, especially in Central Europe. Normally work stops. There is a gathering, usually with a blessing or a procession, sometimes on the construction site, sometimes with a pastor or priest in the church. It's done differently, but in any case, it's more or less a holiday for the miners and the tunnel builders, which is also still celebrated here in this region. We buy them. Sometimes a tunnel construction manager or a project manager has one and makes it available here. The Barbara statue is put up here and then it's consecrated and also blessed. The blessing takes place during the christening. As well as the tunnel, the TBMs used are also given names. Despite all the celebrities, a tunnel christening is above all an event for the miners. It's also about giving the tunnel boring machines a local reference and thus soliciting support for the project in the region. The machine in the south tube will be christened by pupils of a secondary school in Wendlingen. We name this machine Wanda. The name is an acronym and means in English Wendlingen on the Neckar through the Alp foothills. I name this machine Zibilla. Good luck! The North Tunnel machine is named after Sibylla von der Teck, a legendary figure from the region, a wise woman with a great fortune who helped the poor. She left the region out of grief for her sons. Her namesake will be staying here for the next one and a half years. Three, two, one, and go! The so-called switch-on is only symbolic. It will be another month before Wanda begins her journey into the darkness. Nicole Hofmeister Kraut, on the other hand, is already starting her work now. She's the tunnel godmother, and thus one of the most important people at the construction site. I wish all of you miners much joy and success in your work, great stamina and a safe tunnel construction at all times. May you all finish your work safe and sound. God's blessing and good luck. As the tunnel godmother, Hofmeister Kraut represents St. Barbara on Earth. She provides support to the miners and lends them her ear. This makes her an important person for the tunnel workers to speak to, because the job is hard. So for me it is a great honour to be the godmother of one of the largest projects here on the ulm wendling extension line, the Alpvorland tunnel, and to be the earthly representative of St. Barbara in this function with my protection, my hands, my companionship for the miners. That's an honour and that's not granted to many people. I am proud of it and I am looking forward to the coming years when I can accompany the miners. I wish them good health, no accidents and a trouble-free construction project. And I wish them good luck. Three months later, the machines are already halfway underground. One of the greatest dangers in tunnel construction is fire. There are no escape routes in the tunnel. Uwe Stenner and his colleagues do not want to rely on heavenly assistance alone. Wanda and Sibylla, therefore, have rescue containers that provide protection for 26 people for 24 hours. The main purpose of the container is this. There's a large water tank back here. The water is constantly cooled, then it generates cold, so to speak, so that when the outside temperature rises, the container still produces a temperature inside in which you can wait for these 24 hours. Because otherwise, if the fire is too close, you would be boiled alive. That's one measure. The second measure is that we have the air supply here, batteries of compressed air cylinders in the back. 
That means the first measure I have to take is to switch on the system, because it also runs on an emergency power system. So if the power supply goes, I have enough emergency power capacity to maintain all functions for 24 hours. I switch it on with this. When I've switched on the system, I have to look here. I still have a power connection, an air connection from outside where the compressor supplies air. Because I produce carbon dioxide, that is, breathing gases that I produce when I exhale, there are two so-called scrubbers here containing soda lime. It's stored in the boxes down here. I just dump it in here, switch on the scrubber, and it takes the CO2 out of the air so that I don't get CO2 poisoning. What we also have in the rescue container are the water bottles here, the drinking water bottles for the 24 hours. Up here are the measuring devices for air measurement, which also operate the alarm displays. On the one hand, the curtain serves as a partition for the chemical toilet that goes here. On the other hand, it's also a smoke curtain. So when the door opens and closes, because people are coming, the smoke should be kept out. Additional equipment here are these closed circuit breathing apparatuses for the rescue teams that we have to have on hand so we can fight fires with our own people. These people are specially trained and with this equipment they're independent of any outside air for four hours. This is similar to the fire brigade which also uses these devices as closed circuit breathing apparatus. Apart from that we still have the rest of our equipment here such as medical kits and rescue stretchers. You always have to be careful because, well, I don't want to say high-risk workplace, because if you're careful it's normal, but you have to pay attention. You work in a confined space, in a closed, let's say, tube, and that simply requires a certain amount of vigilance. Meanwhile, Sibylla has completed two metres of driving and is thus ready for ring construction. Lining segments are delivered for installation in two trips. The reinforced concrete components are brought by so-called multi-service vehicles, which can drive in and out of the machine without turning round. Yes, Thomas. OK. OK, stop. Now we need to stop. Kamil Popovic stops the machine so that his colleagues can install the ring. Here we have a, our extension of cylinder. It's telling us when it's possible to build the next ring, when our excavation is finished and then the ring building. Uh, <laughs> and then ring building uh, time. The elements are moved individually into the segment feeder from where they're installed on the tunnel wall. Like Lego bricks, the crane lifts the 10.5 ton blocks effortlessly with a vacuum plate. Every move has to be perfect and the team well attuned to each other. Of course, uh, all the team in the TBM is important. Every section Every man has something to do. Without him, we cannot excavate. So it's not about only TBM operator, but all of the people, like uh, ring builders, grout injection, and uh, support team. Everybody are important here. Not only TBM operator, but all people. So we are team, and we are work like a team. It's like this. The lining segments are brought to the segment feeder in the order in which they'll be installed. If the crane driver delivers the wrong segment, it takes a lot of time and trouble to move it back again. Foreman Gunter Müllner makes sure that this doesn't happen. The order of the segments that are delivered is predetermined in the design plan. We install the first three stones at the top right or the top left. Then the flank stone is installed at the top left and right and then the case stone is pushed in last and then the ring is finished again. We put them in according to how they're delivered. The tunnelers are protected by the shield skin, which is located between their work area and the tunnel wall. The elements are moved with a special powerful crane arm, the erector. 
The Erector operator controls his device by sight and is assisted by his colleagues to ensure that the segment goes into exactly the right position. The Erector is a very compact device in itself. It has the function of being able to turn all the way round. It has two arms on the left and right which are marked as blue lifting arms. This vacuum suction plate is attached to these arms. It sucks the segment up with a vacuum pressure of 0.8 to 0.9 bar. Then it moves up onto these segments, clamps onto the stone, brings it into position at the front, turns it the right way, then pulls it back to the ring installed last, then it is set up. That means you can also tilt the stone on the erector and turn it on the table itself. This multifunctional erector device sets it up exactly to the millimeter and then the thrust cylinders move in and press the segment against the last installed ring. The erector releases the vacuum, moves down, moves back, gets the next segment. The thrust cylinders move back from the place where a new segment is to be set. The smallest lining segment is the so-called keystone, which closes the ring at the end. Its position can be calculated precisely. Once the keystone has been set and the ring is complete, the thrust cylinders move forward again and push the machine further, up to the next ring. The cylinders also press the newly set stone against the previously built ring. During the process, mortar is continuously being filled in between the segments and the ground to stabilize the tube. All in all, it takes the miners about half an hour to finish the ring, provided nothing goes wrong. That especially depends on the erector operator. Operating an erector is actually a matter of experience. Sometimes people are newly trained to do it, and after a while, when the foreman thinks the man is ready, he's allowed to use the machine. It's not just a matter of controlling and steering the machine, it's a job that requires a high level of concentration. The operator mustn't be distracted by anything, because if he makes a mistake with his remote control, it can cost lives and vast amounts of money. The erector operator has to control his machine with millimetre precision. The segments have to fit exactly on top of each other so that the ring is completely sealed at the end. This is a task that requires a high level of concentration. If you don't install the ring precisely, for example, you're two by two millimeters too far outwards, then the keystone dimension that you need for the so-called K-stone will simply be too large. And then the joints will be too wide apart and the seal won't be squeezed and then water will get into the ring. That's why accuracy to the millimeter is the most important thing of all. Just how precisely the men have worked can be seen now. The keystone, or K-stone, still has to be put in the right place. Will it fit? Keystone is the, the last stone what we install. So, keystone making ring complete. He closing, it's like a lock segment. So he, uh, the DMT system helping us uh, to choose position for that. Otherwise, we need to spend uh, a lot of time to measure and calculate. This is a much quicker uh, idea. Popovich's colleagues have done everything right. The keystone fits perfectly. The ring is complete. Ten hours a day, underground, without sunlight and usually far from home. You have to be born for tunnel construction. The fascination of my job? Well, first of all, it's the camaraderie you experience on the shift and with the people I work with. And the job itself is also very interesting because there are always new situations that you can actually master with your expertise. And then you see whether you're qualified for your job or not. It's a very interesting job. I love my job and I have no plans to retire at 60. This ring is finished. Popovich can start the machine again and continue the advance. There are still more than 7,000 rings to be installed. A never-ending task, but Popovich is looking forward to it. 
my work it's uh, quite difficult important and i think uh, very dangerous so it's make me uh, quite happy with this i like to feel like uh, i i have a i have an important job and um, it's a great thing to be a part of this project to 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 make this uh, tunnel of course I, I believe uh, this will help a lot to Deutsche Bahn uh, to make a traffic solution. <laughs> of course, uh, we are on the beginning of this tunnel. We make only 19 rings now. Uh, it's uh, many, many rings on the front to do. So we'll see what, what will be after one kilometer. One kilometer always in the tunnel, tunnel world, it's a magic score, first kilometer. So uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, work with this project. It will be many weeks before the first kilometer is completed. Kamil Popovic and his colleagues are proud of their work in the Mole of Steel. The fascination of reaching new places underground is what drives them on. <laughs> 